Albertans, including stakeholders and citizens, are asking whether the royalty review with a $2.96 million price tag was really worth it. Let's take a look at what was lost at the expense of learning a lesson we already knew, that Albertans really are getting their fair share when it comes to royalties. What happened to the investments and the way the world views Alberta as a place to do business in the oil and gas industry? First off, Alberta fell from 16th to 38th most attractive jurisdiction in the world, and this is due to policy changes like corporate tax increases and the carbon tax, and of course, the new royalty review. Where Alberta was once considered Canada's economic leader in GDP and private job sector growth, we've now seen investments bleeding from the province and an increase in public sector or unionized jobs. And speaking of oil and gas investments bleeding the province, here are just a few that were lost. Calgary-based Crescent Point Energy was the first to state that they would move their capital due to the royalty review, which they ended up following up on. And Encana's Duvernay gas plant was deferred specifically due to the royalty and climate change reviews put forth by the NDP government. Pengrowth also reduced its capital by a range of 190 to 210 million for the year in 2015 and quoted the royalty and climate change reviews as a direct result. And that's just what I can list off of the top of my head. Remember those times Rachel Notley and Shannon Phillips insisted that Albertans weren't getting their fair share of royalties? And the other component of this is of course royalties. Um, and uh, we do not collect an appropriate royalty for either our oil sands bitumen or our conventional oil and gas reserves. Well, frankly, the billions of dollars in investment and the uncertainty that it caused weren't worth the cost of finding out the exact opposite. And I think the NDP finally learned the lesson that capital is mobile. Investors won't stick around in an environment where they're punished for success because they have shareholders to answer to. I suppose that's life in the real world outside of the progressive dream. For the Rebel.media, I'm Holly Nicholas.